All right, a uh, little different take on things here than I normally do. You know, you got to think of stuff in big, you got to think of it in small, you got to think of it as ancient, you got to think of it as modern day, but it's all tied, you know. So a thought occurred to me. The other day I was watching CBS, and, you know, why are they calling it CBS? Why, because it's a central broadcasting system, or does that is that really another word? So I got, I got to looking, because I know that this symbol here is a dead... Dead reaction to that. So it's a, it's an absolute perfect match for the South Pole of Saturn. What the fuck is going on with Saturn? So if we do an overlay, you can see that 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 is almost exactly what that is, right? So I started thinking CBS, CBS, and I started sounding it out. CBS, 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 and so I found this. Okay, I found this interesting little bit here. Notice it says Sibis and Saturn. Yeah? So we look. We can say Sackley Lab Saturn. Stockholm, Frankfurt, blah, blah, Dion. But this is an interesting word for, because for those of you that don't know what Dion is, remember what I told you what the pattern is. Right? Here's Dion. Dion, it's a moon of Saturn discovered by Cassini in 1684. Okay, and so it's interesting that its orbital period is 66 hours, blah, blah, whatever. That's occultic stuff. I'm not, I don't want to really touch on that, trying to keep this somewhat scientific. So I'm thinking, now, now I'm thinking, wow, we must, if we're thinking on such a microscopic level that this is something in a lab, well, what would it be? So I continue to dig and dig and dig, and I, I, I put all the writing in here. But I'll tell you what, it's awfully freaking interesting to me that all these symbols... Are attached to this reactor. So here, look. Here you got the black cube. Here you got the seal of Saturn. Right here. Here you got harp. I mean, it's spelled out. Here you got the, the, the Saturn. Yeah. Here you got the hexagon. Here you got the Masonic checker. You got a black one and a white one. Okay. As I put, you live in here, sons of Adam. Adam. A T O M. And then I put let's split. Where do you know where do the where, where do you think these catchphrases come from? Let's split, groovy, all of that stuff. I mean, it's just this is just a video to think on. And then I ran across looking up another word. You know, there are atomic particles called mesons, which is which are very close to mesons. Okay, you can go in and look this stuff up for yourself. I'm just telling you, it all it's all tied together. And there's probably a lot of truth in what I'm telling you here. I'm not saying this is the end-all, be-all of your creation. I'm just saying there's all kinds of stuff in there. And what I find absolutely interesting is here you got Saturn, the moon, and then you got a crisis. And the crisis is attached to this, this particular atomic ejector or gun. You know? I don't know, man. Maybe that's got to do with gun control. I don't know. Maybe we're maybe 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 we're inside this thing, and everything that we're saying is really what the technicians are doing on the outside, and it appears to us in the news and everything as stories, but it's really commands that are being put into the machine because you and me and everybody else is either positive, a positron, a neutron, or a ne or a, a, ne a negative, plus minus and neutral. You know, and 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 so maybe these these people that. Crawl, cause all this chaos are supposed to be here to create energy. Isn't that what everybody keeps saying? Oh, they feed off your negative energy. Well, then now you're talking atomic. You're talking about an atomic level. I'm just saying. But this dude's this dude's video that's coming up has got a lot of occultic symbols in here. The guy knows a lot about atomic stuff. I don't know who the hell this guy is. Never seen him. I just find it interesting that I take this path and I run into this guy who whoever's tattoo artist is obviously straight off of his arm his arm his back or his chest because he's got the shit on his head if you watch in there you're gonna see that you're gonna see the the raven which is the messenger of saturn you're gonna see all kinds of stuff and at the end you'll see ishtar the statue which is which is the babylonian thing the goddess of babylonia that runs this planet marduk saturn whatever you want to call it this is all tied together in a big story somehow some way so it's just a thought. It's not necessarily mean that we're living in a fucking reactor, but it is highly suspicious. 
Let's talk about some small um, particles that we share this universe with. Um, negative pi mesons and mu mesons are two different kinds of electrons that are a little heavier than electrons. And when I say little, I mean many, many times. Um, so if an electron is TNT, then a mu meson may end up being something like an H-bomb. Now, it's only bad or dangerous, these mu mesons, uh, or these negative pi mesons, when they undergo spallation. Uh, two L's. And spallation occurs as an event. Before spallation, the particle is just like a regular electron and leaves no trace. And afterwards, there's a huge spike in... Um, what the particle does. And what it does is release an incredible amount of energy. Now, in most scenarios, you would not really view these as good things. But uh, under cancer treatment, these things can be lifesavers. Because they could enter your body uh, without bothering anything and then get to the melanoma, the uh, tissue that's turned carcinogenic, and then release all their energy, killing only the right kind of cells. <clears throat> now, I'm so liberal that I think that there aren't any right kinds of cells to kill. <laughs> And if we could only turn cancerous cells into our corner, have them help us, instead of hurt us, that would be ideal. But for anybody familiar with biology or medicine, you, you have to realize that that's usually not the case. Um, some cells genuinely are cancerous and genuinely are dangerous. So the trick then, is determining which ones are and which ones aren't. Now, mu meson and negative pi meson treatments recognize cancerous cells because they treat hard cancerous cells, uh, places where you know that there's a tumor. But if you're not certain whether a cell is cancerous or not, you can't start bombarding it with you know, small particles that are going to explode. So identifying the problem again, and as you know, in almost all aspects of life, is the fundamental challenge with using pretty much any kind of treatment, whether it's cultural, whether it's biological, physical. Um, identify the problem and then put your um, tools to the task. Goodbye. Really quick, this should make you think a little bit. This was a big winner in a lot of categories for movies last year in 2012. The Life of Pi. Go back and listen to what the guy just talked about. Pi Masons. Pi Mesons. Yeah? Interesting stuff, Maynard. I'm just saying is all. Also, to finish this off, here's a picture of, of, of Eric. Uh, A.K.A. Covenant of Love, but that's not his channel anymore, so I can't say his regular channel because I could get in trouble. But that's him. That's a picture of him playing. Uh, he was playing at the Waldorf Historia. Way to go, Eric. Two thumbs up, buddy. Looking good, buddy. Looking real good. <laughs>